Howdy everyone, welcome back to Hex Hunter and welcome back to part two of our Hex Budget Challenge. We're going to start off a little bit by going through the draft, which luckily the first half of the draft footage where we talk about the first half of the picks is still fairly well salvaged and you get an idea of what I was thinking while this draft was going on. This is some good information of kind of like what ways to think and some ways to not think on how you go for the draft. So what we're going to do here is that as soon as the music kicks up, we're going to go ahead and start speeding that up because we can't have outside music presented on YouTube without all the necessary licensing involved, and we don't have those licenses. So what we can do on Twitch is not necessarily what we can do on YouTube. The plan is, is that as soon as the picks are done, we're going to go into the games, and the games are going to be sped up, and we're going to have those to music for everyone so that they can see what plays were done and what was going on at the time and towards the end of the match we'll go ahead and have a quick breakdown of what we thought of initially went with the draft and where we see where the deck succeeded as well as where it went wrong thanks for watching and keep tuned we're going to be jumping right into the picks here also catches up actually i guess it's kind of nice to pull a legendary in a kind of mediocre pack sweet all right well i guess uh what do we want coming back around? I guess the Wrath Seeker when it comes back around. We might want to be building kind of a uh, a Blood Ruby, maybe kind of a Blood Ruby uh, deck that kind of just zips through everyone. Ooh, and we just got a Gore Seeker. I mean, we have the Incantation of Fear, which is a cool rare. Uh, doesn't really. I mean, Zoldog kind of helps, but I think that Gore Seeker is kind of more along the alley at the moment with what we have. But is it the best card in the pack? The Blood Creeper might be the best card here. Oh, and feel free to like yell stuff in chat. I'm going to be looking over here to at the chat to see what people are saying here. Because I'm thinking the Gore Seeker. It goes well with Zoltog. It's got Rage and Swift Strike, which is amazing. It doesn't put as much early pressure on as the Blood Creeper. So I think the synergy is really nice there. But then you also got the Crushing Blow. The Crushing Blow probably won't wield, but neither will the Gore Seeker. Gore Seeker is kind of bomb malicious. I'll go with the Gore Seeker here. So far we're starting very Orc. Um, wow, that Cloud Titan is kind of nice though. Now we could possibly go Ruby Wild, you know, making use of that Wild Aura. Uh, or we could go Ruby Sapphire, and if we went with the Ruby Sapphire and we went with Feather Drifting Down River, then we could have a Flying Zoltog, or Flying Orc. And we're not getting the stuff that allows us to just kind of go straight through. I mean, the Effigy is really cool. But then again, it's a freaking Cloud Titan. Uh, those can be really bomby when they just, you know, it's a flying 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, Mazat is really good with the the gem. Um, I think the... I see myself making use of that Wild War more than the Cloud Titan. But the Cloud Titan's a bomb and I don't want to face it. So we'll take it even if I don't play it. That's a Cloud Titan I don't have to face. Uh, oh, that's a Buccaneer right there. Um, yay. So the the budget challenge is uh, Function and I decided we're going to cast off our cushy Kickstarter accounts to really take a look at what it's like being a new player who just, you know, they've got 10 bucks, they want to join in on the game. They just got a beta key, and they're like, all right, I've got 10 bucks to spend. What can I do in Hex? And the reason we chose $10 is because that's the price of joining any other TCG out there uh, in the market. Same for Magic, Pokemon, Duel Masters, Yu-Gi-Oh! All their starters are 10 bucks. Uh, and so if the thought is, is like, how far can you go with just $10 in Hex? So, so far we've gotten, uh, you know, we've gotten several different rares which i think they included that in the price of the 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 starters themselves but you start off with a free starter you can go through your starter trials uh, this guy is pretty snazzy but we're not really playing the bots um 
so in any case, the idea is how far can you go with just $10 in hex? And we have a set of goals as well as dreams that we'd like to accomplish. And so far, I'm part of the way on my playing people goals. We've got one out of 20 wins. We're going to try to get a, a complete set of commons and uncommons as well as, uh, you know, see if we can win a tournament, see if we can make sure that we participate in drafts and the like. And Colin just linked it, which is awesome. I'm winding up pretty deep into Sapphire here. I think that Ruby Aura would be really nice with my uh, Ruby cards at the moment. So the idea at the moment is we want to try to, you know, win the drafts, participate, do well. Uh, we're starting off with a Swiss draft because that's kind of the entry level draft. You want to get the most games out of it, get the most familiar with the game. See, a Sapphire work work really well though with Zoltog, but giving any of my other troops that Ruby or a Swift Strike is also really sweet. We haven't seen a lot of major blood come through. I, I hate to see let that blood aura go though. Let's go with the Sapphire aura in this case. See, now we've got a Shard of Fate, a Wild Growth. Uh, we can get Savage Raider, good early beats on here. Ooh, Prairie Scout's also really good. But we don't have any more Sapphire in here. This is the only Ruby left in this pack. Wild might be an issue. We don't have any removal yet. Hmm. I, I kind of like the idea of kind of going maybe uh, Ruby Sapphire Aggro. I don't know. Haven't tried running that before. I guess I can give it a shot. All right. So we an assault technician still wield. Oh man, an inner conflict came around. That's pretty much the best card there. I don't want to face an inner conflict. I uh, hate to let an assault technician go, but can't let an inner conflict go either. And a diamondora came around. Is diamond open? Diamond might be open. I mean to have. Both of those come around. Um, okay, so I don't want to get the army ants. We don't have any robots. Uh, let's see. None of these guys particularly help me. I don't want to face a sorrow in general. I don't think I might just hate hate that sorrow. Yeah, we'll hate the sorrow. Get that guy out of here. Unless I see some amazing blood come around. Ooh, Mazat Ranger. I like the Mazat Ranger, it's also an orc. Maybe I will see some blood come through. It's not necessarily a bad idea. I'd need to pull some fixing if I was going to run three shards though. Let's go with the Mazat Ranger. I said let's go with the Mazat Ranger. Clickety click. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull that sapphire back out. Is wild open? I'm, I'm not really planning on going diamond. Though I mean, the diamond's there. I don't want to face a wild ore, so let's get that wild ore out of the way. Which it's, hey, I've got a wild ore now. <laughs> I mean, these are not too bad for shards that I don't have decks for yet. A wild ore and an inner conflict. See, oh, do I want the savage raider or do I want the suppressive fire? Savage Raider is really cool. It could help me win here. I mean, because I've a lot of my attackers are orc based, but the suppressive fire will allow me to get through. Mm, that suppressive fire, it won't wield back around, but I might see another one in this next pack. Sight Fury, yes, please. Rage! That's what that Sight Fury does. Target troop gets permanent plus two rage. Um, Bone Warrior, Shroom Tank, uh, I, nah, let's get the Shroom Tank out of there, just cause, I don't want to be facing Shin here, ooh, Shard of Fate, we might just be able to make this three shards thing work, <laughs> and an Unmerciful Tormentor, um, this really wants me to run 
Ruby Orc. Oh, wow. This is not a bad pack either. I mean, the Immersible Tormentor is really good with Zoltog, and just getting the Orcs like this is pretty cool. But then you got the Wailing Banshee, a Mortar Strike, another Wild Aura, a Wrath Seeker, an Adaptable Infusion Device, and then you got Succulent Roostosaur, which is greatness. I think I have to go with the Unmerciful Tormentor just because we've got such a huge Orc contingent. I think so. That's, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. I am up for anything here. I'm definitely, yeah, I guess it's got to be the Unmerciful Tormentor. It's a 1-1 one, one early Orc. It's aggressive. Alright, let's see what else we got here. So... In our shard, Scrap Welder, we don't have the artifacts. Mesmerize is a possibility. Uh, then Sight Fury has a good chance of coming back around. Uh, the Flock of Seagulls would be rough for us to face. We don't have any direct damage, and we don't have any ways to particularly remove that right now. I think the Wailing Banshee is probably the best card in the shards we've got at the moment here. Because it can just swing right through and you can put the Insight Fury on the Wailing Banshee. Uh, that Bucktooth Commander is going to be a problem for someone. Yeah, I'm thinking the Wailing Banshee here. See if we can try to make this three color a success. Eh. Yeah, and that Insight Fury has a good chance of coming back around. I don't like that Quick Strider though. But he won't be able to block a Wailing Banshee. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, what do we've got here? Um, so we have Incubation Slave, an Orc. Mimic, amazing. That's a really, oh my god, I can mimic, I can't mimic my Zolt. Actually, I could mimic my Zoltog and then play again afterwards. And that's a good use for my Sapphire. But then there's also Crushing Blow. If I use my Crushing Blow, I will, on an Orc while Zoltog's in, that Crush Damage will still trigger the Orc use. Plus, it's just a really great combat trick. I don't think that Crushing Blow is going to wheel, but neither will this Mimic. It's a basic action, though. Decisions, decisions. I've only got a few seconds. Mimic is stronger, and if I ever want to build Sapphire, that's a great card to have. Alright, so now things are a little simpler. Uh, I don't think I want to take the Raider at the moment. We've got two Raiders right now. We don't have any fixing here. Uh, our Sapphire choices in here are not great. Our blood choices in here are not great. So we're between the Raider and the Arena Brawler. And a, an Assault Technician. Well, how are we doing on cost? We're still... We don't have much in our two slot. I couldn't hate out the Howling Brave. Or hate out the Minaru Sensei. But getting some good early aggro. Especially in my two slot. Uh, let's go with the the brawler. See now we oh veteran gladiator hell's yeah.
So we just hit the end of the picks here, and one of the things I'd like to mention as we move on to the first game is we seem to have hit a bit of a schizophrenic nature when we were taking a look and doing the second half of this draft. Initially, we thought we were going to go with a Lionel Flynn style of deck where you'd be able to have early aggression, some direct damage, and take advantage of maybe an orc backup plan because of what you might be able to find with the gem crazed berserkers and mazat rangers. What ended up occurring though, and what we ended up drafting, got sidetracked by seeing a lot of other powerful cards in shards that were not necessarily we were keen on drafting. This was initially brought in when we started looking at the Sapphire picks and really kind of started with the Cloud Titan. What we should have done is remained a lot more focused on what we were drafting, and we're going to see that come through on the games. This first game is... Well, this first game is a little bit of a disappointment and hopefully it will go a little bit faster. But we see much better execution on the following games on this set. And we'll definitely see uh, what happens when we move on to round two here in a little bit. But until then, enjoy the music that's fully licensed and open for everyone to use, which is why we're using it here to keep the silence at bay. But watch how some of these picks go. See what happens when you don't necessarily balance all the shards in your deck. But then also see that when your cards come together, sometimes magic happens.
just coming to the end of game two here, and it is beautiful when your deck decides to come together. Now, game three is game three is definitely interesting, but not interesting from our perspective, and I'll tell you the reason why. Game three is an example of what happens when your opponent decides that all of the elements of their deck are going to work in a harmony that is greater than what your deck is pulling out. So what we're going to see here as it begins to unfold is my opponent is able to pull off their hop hero well before I am able to get anything that resembles a form of removal to deal with it. And when hop hero gets on the board and especially in a shin hair deck that has proven it's able to consistently produce battle hoppers, it is a sight to be feared, especially when you have very low uh, toughness troops and in addition to low toughness troops, that the blockers were just substantial and hop here was very very early so hats off to my opponent on this one they put together a competent shin hair deck and we are going to move on to round two of this swiss draft